Ah, welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. You thought I was going to come from this direction, didn't you? Because I always do come from that direction. Well, uh, hi. Uh, happy Tuesday. My name is Kevin, and come to you from gmat.magoosh.com. And we're going to look at common flaw. A common flaw today that you see in the arguments uh, for the writing section um, on the GMAT. And so what I'd like to do, do is take a look at uh, what you should be looking for how to attack that flaw or what you should do, and then an example. So let's dive in. We're looking at vague words or vague terminology. Um, this means that there are words out there that don't have precise meanings, and so it's unclear exactly what you might be referring to. So for example, um, if we're talking about the people who work at Magoosh, and I say more people at Magoosh like chocolate chip cookies than oatmeal raisin cookies. I have provided you with some detail, but it's not a lot of detail because you don't know what the breakdown is. Based on that sentence, there might be uh, 13 people who like chocolate chip cookies and 12 people who like oatmeal raisin. That's really close. There's like, it's almost like a split right down the middle. Or it could mean that 23 people like chocolate chip cookies and only two like oatmeal raisin cookies, which is drastically different. That sort of difference is not uh, born out of the sentence or by using the word more. And so when you're analyzing an argument, take a look or keep your eye out for these vague words like some, more, less, many, few. Um, these are words that don't have a precise meaning they can be vague, and so that means there is potentially a flaw in the argument. So, what to do? Talk about the range of meaning. Just like I did in my example, um, I talked about how there's a lot of ways to interpret what more means um, when it comes to cookies in the Magoosh office. So you'd want to do the same thing. Um, talk about how the words are imprecise and that you can't draw conclusions when things are ambiguous. It's hard to draw a really strong conclusion if you aren't sure what the words mean, if you aren't clear on exactly what we're talking about. So let's take a look at an example. Um, this is an example argument that came from the PDF that you can download from mba.com. I'll have a link down below so you can go there and read it. Um, it's um, a memo from an IT department um, and in the uh, argument, they say that if you make people more efficient, you're going to have more profit. Then they say, if you improve IT, you're going to increase efficiency. And the conclusion is thus, you should invest in IT because you'll maximize efficiency and you'll increase your profit margin. So um, hopefully, you notice right at the beginning, We've got some of our vague words right here. And so what you'd want to do if you were to see this argument is talk about how much, how much efficiency are we talking about? How much more efficiency do you need in order to have more profit? What are the actual gains here? What are the actual numbers? So let's say you know if you increase someone's efficiency so that um, it only takes them maybe two hours to do something, instead of two and a half hours, you've increased their efficiency, they're more efficient, but it's only 30 minutes of difference. Is that going to lead to more profit? And if it does, how much profit? Is it only going to increase profits by a couple of cents? Will it increase profits by a dollar? Those are good things to know. Um, and without knowing those things, it's really hard to know if you should invest in IT in order to maximize those efficiencies. So, Really, to make this argument stronger, you would mention, um, you'd want to know how much more efficiency do we need to really get meaningful profit. So, uh, you know, a couple cents of increased profit might not be worth the investment um, in an, and more IT. Okay, so that is a good example of some vague language. Hopefully this is helpful for you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. And if you have any requests for videos, please let me know that as well. I'm always looking for new ideas. 
And then of course, subscribe to this channel if you find it exciting and interesting to hear me talk about GMAT stuff. Um, you'll be notified of the next upcoming video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Good luck with your studies and be excellent to the universe.